Pitter patter, let's get at her, boys. All right. Uh, hey, do you have a beer that you've made a whole bunch of times, and that's one that you just kind of keep coming back to over time? I think that's fun, and that is the case with me. There's a long time ago, I made a Anchor Steam clone. I mean, I, who knows if it actually was close to the original recipe but I liked the beer and I had a friend it was a steam beer and I had a, a, a you know I had a sassy uh, wife at the time and my friend came up with the name steam and wife lager and uh, I thought it was fantastic and I took the name and I have made that beer or a version of that beer probably almost more than any other single beer in the last 19 years um, and so I thought, I've been doing all these Kvike beers, let's get back to some basics. Let's get back to some regular ass beer. That's what I'm making today. You'll see some clips ahead now that are from last night, uh, just short little clips. Just doing a regular ass brew day, but I thought the idea of making a beer that you, uh, you know, that it's not, it's not like a house beer even. It's nothing even special about it, but it's just kind of one that I've come back to. I think that's kind of a fun thing about the hobby. But, of course, I also like making beers that I've never made and tweaking recipes and experimenting. But we got a nice November morning here. The sun is out, uh, bringing it to a boil. And uh, the hops on this one are in here. It just uses Northern Brewer... Cascade, there's a little bit of that. The grain bill is very simple, mostly just uh, some kind of base malt and a little bit of medium crystal. This thing's almost to a boil. So uh, let's get it, get it going. So we have the old mash ton, 11 pounds of grain, normally I do 10 and a half for this recipe but I just had a little bit extra on hand. So in this case it's 10 and a half pounds of Rarturo and a half pound of medium crystal and I'll aim for a mash dump in the low 150s and there you go. Just starting to collect the first runs. All right, so I made this last night. I had a little clip of that. It's nice and creamy, milky, yeasty there, as you can see. And so that's looking pretty good. I haven't made a yeast starter for a while with all these fight beers, but uh, looks like I figured out how to do it. Doing pretty good, it's 62 Fahrenheit. Uh, before pitching the yeast, let's see, where's my line? Just a little bit here under five gallons, but I've got my yeast starter. Um, start with six and a half gallons. And the gravity, I'll get the dial in reading, it's close to 1050. And here is the starter. Uh, y yeast. This time, not the Imperial that I've been using for two, three years. Um, I just had to go to the store and buy it like a regular person. How about that? So, there we go. Pitch, pitch, pitch. Yeast, yeast, yeast. And I will hit it with some... 
pure oxygen and get it into my cold room, which I looked and it was 50. So I'll have to check the temperature range on this. I think it's more like 55 or 58 to 65-ish. So I might have to move it to a different room or put some stuff around it so it can generate some of its own heat. But uh, we'll figure that out and we'll see how fast she takes off. So I pitched the yeast about five hours ago and it is definitely fermenting. I have not taken a look yet, but let's see if there's any sort of, yeah, there's a little bit of croisin. So it is off and running. What's our temperature? 62 still. So it hasn't dropped even though this room is cooler, but I'll definitely keep an eye on that. The nice thing is it's off to an early start. Well, that's a welcome change. Where the cocoa is. What's up, barrel. everybody? We are at Chip Walton's Whoa. Sammy Claus party. Unbelievable. There's hey. a lot of people here, but we got four onlookers to taste this beer, which has now been in the keg for nine plus six, 15 days. Uh, it's a little over a month from brew day. It went from 10.51 to 1.009. For those who are unaware, it was 10.5 pounds raw churro, churro, 0.5 pounds medium crystal, 1.5 ounce northern brewer for 60 minutes, and remember that, 0.5 ounce northern brewer for 30 minutes, and an ounce of Cascade at the end. 21.12. I gelatined it, so actually, I don't know if that's okay for you. Sorry. It's all Sorry. right. Sorry. Yeah, it's nice. No, but it's. it's when you said at the end, animal product. for that last, uh, the cascade you said, what, do you mean at, at zero minutes? Or yes, sir. Hops? Yeah. Okay. Flame out. out. Yeah. Um, fermentation was at roughly 58 degrees Fahrenheit. The low end for this range is like. 55 or maybe even I think it's like 55 to 65 so mm -hmm. I was pushing it towards the low end a little bit but as you can see by the final gravity it attenuated fine what y'all get from this it's nice and bitter that's what I was gonna say <laughs> and that could be in contrast with just like everything we've had tonight which has been like meat imperial stouts barley wines we're just mm -hmm. finally drinking something that tastes like a bitter beer it makes me wonder like though I mean in a dumb way this almost seems like it's completely opposite of the, the era it could have been born out of what it's like it's like a session IPL <laughs> but it's just the fact that it's a lager that's bitter what instead would be, of a bitter what would be, a lager that's clean and kind of almost like strict so when down. I said remember that for the mm. 1.5 ounce of northern brewer with the alpha acid content coming in at a hefty 8.7 mm. I kind of think could have done one ounce. I think there might be a little I, more just the top bitterness in that spot. Uh, at yeah. the bittering charge. I think no. it maybe mm. has, um, you know, I think it drinks okay and it might soften up a little bit, but I think it has like a little bit of bitterness to it. There is, there, does. Yeah, there is a side of me that being a, like a craft beer drinker and having my palate just being blown out by everybody taking thing to, things to extremes that this like, I don't know, it's nice. It doesn't taste it just too seems, bitter. No, it doesn't taste too bitter to me and it's still, it, it <laughs> yeah. just tastes like the beer that I want to be drinking. This is a beer, as I said in the intro, that I've made over 10 times yeah. in different iterations, some kind of different hops, <coughs> grain, and even I made an ale version, but generally this this, this mm -hmm. recipe is generally the main one that I come back to. For whatever reason, I think of this beer as normally kind of a sweet-ish type beer. And this time around, yeah, I don't know why, mm -hmm. it has a little bit more of a bitter overall effect. I don't think it's That's why I say that session -y. The session's yeah. often like... When right. Put session on something. It like that's true. It's like seventy percent bitter, thirty percent sweet. It means sweet. more it's, bitterness yeah. than the gravity can support. Yeah. I bet you. I, would, I think. I'd be interested to see throughout this winter. I think this will hang on longer because it's gonna just it's gonna fade the bitterness slower. Bitterness might mellow. Yeah. It's yeah, only yeah. like a month. You can enjoy it for one reason now and then another reason like two months from now. Probably. Actually, it's not even a month from brew day. No. So it's nice. Not super That's interesting. Old. Northern yes. Brewers, that bitter. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what happened to it. She got some sass in her pants. Did you say there's like an ounce of the cascade towards the end? Or yeah, the flame out. So actually, when I was 
smelling this, and now I've drank most of this, I was getting some aromas that I thought were kind of unique, and flavors also. I know, there's more, but there's so many beers here today. But uh, uh, I was getting like woody and almost like, when I looked up Cascade, I was like, oh, maybe grapefruit. Maybe that's what's hey, going on. Come on. Sure it's hard know. now. I think it comes off more when you put it in the tap from the glass yeah. and you just drink it like that when you put it in the growler. It's always like a little bit, it may lose a little something in transport. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of grapefruit, but I feel like more piney than anything else. And I, I, I really dig that. I think that's the northern border, but don't you think like there's a wood, woodiness, earthiness? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's ultimate, like reference point though, is a steam. Beer. Well, that's what I was going to say, is it'd be Just interesting if I would have bought, or is it, no, I mean, Anchor, Steam, Anchor yeah. Steam is yeah. this yeast, okay. San Francisco Lager, you can buy San Francisco Lager, you can buy California Common Lager, whatever it is, that's Cable the Anchor, part. that's the Anchor Steam yeast, and I could have, and maybe I yet will, I have not bought Anchor Steam for a long time, but that would be kind of fun to like go buy it. Mm -hmm. And see, is this beer that like somewhat bitter? Is it at all close to this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But any whoosies, this is one. As I said in the intro, I said you know a lot of us have like these beers that we like to make over and over again, kind of household favorites. This is one that I have made as much as probably any other thing. Maybe the Hellas and the Pilsners are the ones that I've made as much as this, but otherwise uh, nothing else. Party is in effect. This is the tasting notes from this chaotic situation. Cheers to everybody for tasting. Thanks for watching. And as always, catch you later. Yeah. Done for done. Let's get very done. You want to try some of this? Very spicy. Yeah, what do you got? The same in my vlogger, yo. Spicy.